that is the first part of the model which is the geometry and the uh, thermochemistry. The second part is parameter estimation using the premixed limits. Okay. Uh, I mentioned earlier that in the limits of monopropellant AP and uh, homogeneous propellant, the burning behavior is controlled by uh, uh, one dimensional flame, one dimensional premixed flame and it can be represented like this. Either you have a block of AP or fine AP HTPB propellant and there is a one dimensional flat flame over that surface. The flame temperature is either corresponding to the AP monopropellant temperature which is 1250 kelvins or corresponding to the fine AP uh, or the homogeneous propellant containing 86 percent AP which will be about 2850 kelvins. Okay. So, the general process is that, that this flame transfers heat to the surface causes decomposition and the decomposition products burn and in turn keep the flame, uh, in turn sustain the flame. Okay. So, the basic equation that is required to uh, that we need to construct to get an expression for burn rate is the heat flux balance at the surface of the propellant okay, or the surface of uh, the uh, condensed phase. Okay. So, the heat flux balance simply says that uh, the heat received from the flame uh, part of it causes decomposition at the surface and the other part goes into the condensed phase. So, this is just an expression of energy conservation at a thin interface. Okay. So, this the left hand side is the flux that goes into the surface. The first term on the right hand side is the uh, energy or the enthalpy change associated with the decomposition at the surface and KDT dx 0 plus is the heat flux that comes from the gas phase into the surface. Okay. Uh, in some formulations you will find that this term the first term on the right hand side is actually on the left hand side, but it is only a matter of convention. Here uh, positive values of Hs are taken to be exothermic, and negative values are taken to be endothermic and therefore the term appears on the right just for consistency. Okay. Now, we can solve for these uh, slopes by integrating the convection diffusion, one dimensional convection diffusion in the solid phase. I am sorry, one dimensional convection diffusion in the gas phase and the heat conduction equation in the solid phase. And these have uh, simple solutions. Uh, in fact, uh, the solutions are exponential profiles and from the profiles you can actually calculate the slopes and uh, the slope in the condensed phase is rho p r dot C p T s minus T 0. And for this uh, for a thin flame approximation with convection diffusion balance in the gas phase, the gradient of temperature at the surface takes this form. Okay. Uh, this you we could have actually written this even without having to solve the equation. This is simply the heat that is required to raise the temperature of a burning propellant uh, at a rate of r dot for it to be increased for its temperature to be increased from T0 to Ts. Okay. This is just m dot Cp Ts minus T0. So, now we have one equation and uh, in the surface heat balance equation there are three unknowns. The surface temperature is unknown, the burn rate is unknown and the other thing that is not known is the flame standoff distance. Okay. So, we need two more equations to close the system. The two more equations come from one comes from the premix flame theory. Uh, this we used earlier, this is exactly same as rho u s u equals omega dot delta h c. Okay. Uh, I am sorry rho u s u is equal to omega dot times delta. Okay. Uh, this we used in the premix flame theory to get an expression for the flame speed and uh, the flame thickness. Here it is exactly the same the burn rate of the uh, AP monopropellant or the homogeneous propellant is balanced by the consumption rate of the reactants in the gas phase. Okay. Here the reaction rate is assumed to be proportional to p squared. We are assuming a bimolecular reaction at a certain standoff distance. Okay. So, you can combine this with the surface heat balance equation that was in the previous page and uh, you will get an expression of this kind. And the surface enthalpy is for pure AP, it is the enthalpy of decomposition of AP. For a mixture of AP and HTPB, it is a mass weighted average of the enthalpy of decomposition of AP and HTPB. Yeah. The other equation that is used to close the uh, uh, system of equations that we have is the pyrolysis law for the AP at the surface which says that the burn rate is 
an ex is an arrhenius function of the surface temperature okay and we have all the equations to close the system but we still have a few parameters for example we have the enthalpy of decomposition we do not know the enthalpy of decomposition of ap at the surface or enthalpy of decomposition of htpb at the surface yeah i will come to that that is exactly what we are uh, going to look at in the next slide yeah okay uh, let me uh, let me explain this in some detail so that uh, we have this is what we have before we go to the parameter estimation i just want you to recognize uh, i have gone through the uh, slides uh, fairly quickly but i want you to recognize the similarity between these two equations this is what we had yesterday you remember and all that has happened here is that if i assumed omega omega dot to be a constant multiplied by uh, pressure squared which is what it will be for a bimolecular reaction these two expressions are exactly the same okay the extra term which is logarithm 1 plus tf minus ts by ts minus t0 minus hs by cp simply comes because of the presence of the condensed phase into which a part of the heat is going okay <clears throat> and this is also the reason now you can I can also write it like this, okay. Simply because the solid surface is regressing at a certain rate, it is giving off gases, there is mass balance at the interface, and therefore the mass of the propellant that is getting converted from solid to ga gaseous phase should be equal to the mass flux in the gas phase, okay. This is also the reason now you can see that rho p r dot goes as square root of k by c p k r logarithm of some factors okay multiplied by the pressure squared when it comes out of the square root goes as pressure okay so when the burning rate is controlled by a premixed flame the r dot will be proportional to p raised to an exponent that is close to 1 okay this is exactly why the ap uh, limit and in the ap limit and in the homogeneous propellant limit the index is close to 1 okay it is slightly lower than 1 because of certain uh, parameters that change in a uh, certain way with pressure in condensed phase that comes from this logarithm term but otherwise the index is very close to 1 it is 0.82 and 0.77 and when diffusion lateral diffusion be effects become significant this index will come down as we will see later okay. So you can go through the uh, derivation slowly but I uh, uh, you know at your own time but Please recognize, I want you to recognize these important similarities between what we did for premix flame analysis and it is being simply extended to a case where the fuel is issued by a solid which is decomposing and giving premix gases, okay. Yeah, so now we, now that we have this expression, uh, what is not, what are all not known is we do not know what Kr is which is the reaction rate constant. Uh, we do not know what HS is, we, know, we do not know what TS is, but what we are going to do is use the known burn rates. Remember that it is easier to measure flame speed than measuring reaction rates. So we get an accurate estimate of the overall reaction rate from the flame speed. That is exactly what we are going to do here to calculate the gas phase reaction rates. We know the measured burn rates of the AP and the homogeneous propellant and from the known burn rates we are going to actually calculate the reaction rates, okay. So 
from this equation where we have rho p r dot equals square root k by c p uh, logarithm term p squared k r with a known value of r dot we are going to calculate k r ok. So, we remember this from here we got omega dot is proportional to rho u s u squared c p by k for a gaseous flame and from this equation we can again show that k r will be dependent on rho p r dot squared with other factors appropriately uh, plugged in ok divided by c p by k the pressure dependence is explicitly accounted for and 1 by logarithm 1 plus something ok. I want you to notice the similarity between these two equations ok. Reaction rate goes as rho u s u squared c p by k here the reaction rate is k r p squared it goes as rho p r dot squared c p by k with an additional logarithm factor coming from the condensed phase heat uh, heat transfer considerations ok. So, this is the same this is a strategy that we are going to use to calculate k r ok. From the known burn rate of a p at 20 atmospheres and the burn rate of the homogeneous propellant at 20 atmospheres we are going to calculate the value of k r ok and use it for calculating or predicting the burn rate of other compositions which have a variety of particle sizes and that is what is done here. Uh, some information about how A p behaves under deflagration is already known. For example, it is known that the A p uh, surface pyrolysis activation temperature is around 6500 Kelvin and we already know that A p starts burning only when it starts melting and therefore, the at 20 atmospheres when it starts burning at 3.3 millimeters per second the surface temperature must be 870 Kelvins. This is something that we already know. This information combined with the activation temperature is used to calculate a pre exponential factor from the uh, known burn rate of A p at 20 atmospheres which is 3.3 millimeters per second and some information on what is the enthalpy of decomposition of A p at the surface is also known. It is known that 60 to 70 percent of all A p decomposes at the surface ok. Surface enthalpy of H t p v is also known to some degree, but this does not uh, as we will see uh, later the choice of this number is not the results are not very sensitive to the choice of this number because the H s which is the surface enthalpy decomposition always appears as logarithm of 1 plus uh, b and in that term in the denominator ok. So, even though H s can change by even if you change H s by a large value the logarithm of 1 plus that term will change only by a small magnitude. So, the results are not sensitive to the choice of the endothermic decomposition enthalpy of uh, HTPB. Thermophysical values appropriate values have been chosen. Adiabatic flame temperature of AP is known 1250 Kelvins. Adiabatic flame temperature of 86 percent AP binder can be calculated or was calculated from uh, NASA CEA using NASA CEA and with all these numbers and from the equation that I showed in the previous slide ok. We can calculate the gas phase reaction rate for A p from the burn rate of A p and the gas phase reaction rate for the homogeneous propellant from the burn rate of the homogeneous propellant. The burn rate of these compositions are equivalent to the flame speed ok. And the important thing is these are all this is a set of parameters that we are going to use for all the calculations and there are no adjustable constants. Any questions at this point? We have completed the first two parts the geometry part and the uh, parameter estimation part. The parameter estimation part I, I would like to re emphasize its uh, connection to the premix flame behavior that we discussed yesterday. But if you have any questions now, uh, we can discuss. <laughs> Correct. KR for uh, the homogeneous binder AP mixture. Yeah. I will I will come to that actually these two are reaction rates at these two numbers are treated as reaction rates at two different temperatures.
and therefore we know the reaction rate at two different temperatures. So a plot of logarithm of Kr versus 1 by T, the slope of it will give me an activation temperature for the gas phase reaction. Correct. Yes. Yeah. That is what is done exactly. Yeah. Yeah. The the burn rate of AP is related to its surface temperature through an Arrhenius pyrolysis law, and therefore the significance of the activation temperature is that it determines the burn rate once the surface temperature is known. That's a okay. That's just a simple statement. Uh, the is the question how it is. Is your question how it is determined? It is not it is not easy or it is not straightforward. Measurement of any reaction parameter is tricky. Okay. So this particular temperature was uh, temperature range was arrived at by a certain kind of calculations that were that was done uh, by uh, Professor P. A. Ramkrishna during his uh, PhD. So this is a number that was arrived at uh, in uh, through a series of calculations where every other parameter was uh, fixed based on the range that was known for those parameters. Calculations were run for AP deflagration for various values of Es by R and it was found that that only for a range of Es by R values that is between 6000 and 7000 kelvins that the calculations showed that AP can undergo steady deflagration. For every other condition, the deflagration was unsteady, but the experimental observation was that AP deflagration is always steady. So it was it is based this calculation is called uh, or this approach is called fixing ES by R based on intrinsic stability. Okay. Any other questions? No. Okay. So the first two parts are done. We have converted the complex geometry into a statistical representation. We have also got parameter estimates. Now, if you remember the formula for the burn rate, we know Li, we have to know R dot I to calculate the burn rate of the propellant. That is what we will go to. But before that, how do we know that this parameter set is good enough? So, using this parameter set, calculations were made for homogeneous compositions of, you know, variety of uh, uh, compositions with uh, AP fraction ranging from uh, as low as 30 percent to as high as 95, 98 percent. Some limited experimental data was available and the predictions and the comparisons were uh, in reasonable agreement. More importantly, uh, you see a, a vertical line that is marked here and to the left of it, it is marked as extinction. Okay. Uh, this is something that I would like to explain. Uh, if you for example, if you have a mixture, a homogeneous mixture of AP and HTPB, let us say with 70 percent AP, okay. what the theory says is that, that the surface temperature of this composition at 6.8 atmospheres would be lower than 870 kelvins. This is a prediction of the theory. It says that if I have a homogeneous mixture of AP and HTPB with 70 percent AP, and if I try to burn it at 6.8 atmospheres, the theory says that since the temperature of the surface is going to be lower than the melting temperature of AP, it will not burn. That is the prediction of the theory. And another prediction that the theory makes is that the question that we can ask is what is the pressure at which it will start burning? Okay. What the theory says is that it will start burning at 20 atmospheres or 20.7 atmospheres as it is indicated here. Okay. How do we know that this is correct? Okay. Similarly, extinction limits have been shown at different pressures. For example, if you go to even higher pressures, 45 atmospheres, compositions containing even 50 percent AP can burn. We go to even higher pressures of 68.9 atmospheres, compositions containing even 30 percent AP can burn. That is what the theory says. Of course, there is no direct uh, comparison that can be done, but there are, if you look at literature carefully, there are statements that uh, are made. For example, compositions that were made with 70, 75 percent AP would not burn at pressures lower than 20 atmospheres. And you will not, I have shown data here and you will not find any data for these compositions at lower pressures or lower AP loading. Okay. Therefore, while this has been a, 
recognized and operational uh, in uh, by experimentalists when they were making propellants. It was not formally theoretically uh, uh, theoretically proved, if I may use that word. Even now, it is not proved, but there seems to be a lot of evidence to indicate that that this is correct. Okay. I will show more evidence as we go along. This is what we call as extinction. The basic idea is that under certain conditions, when the surface temperature becomes lower than the melting temperature of AP, the propellant will not burn. That is the simple idea and it manifests itself in this fashion for homogeneous propellants. It manifests in a certain slightly complicated way for actual propellants. We will look at it what uh, we will look at what it means a little later. Okay. Now, we move on to the third part of the theory which is a model for calculating r dot i, okay. the burn rate of each individual binder matrix coated AP particles. Let me not go into the details because the ideas are essentially the same. The equation that is required for predicting r dot i has a similar form to the premixed limit burn rate equation with a few modifications to account for the effects of lateral diffusion. Okay. Tf is replaced with an effective temperature a method for calculation a little later. The reaction rate is replaced with an effective reaction rate. The gas phase flux multiplied by a geometric factor to account for reduction in the surface area receiving the flux. All of this I will explain in some detail. <coughs> okay. uh, so far we have been looking at either pure AP or homogeneous AP HTPB mixtures. But in reality, we have large AP particles surrounded by binder. Okay. Calculations were done by Gross and Beckstead for such a configuration with uh, AP particles of various sizes surrounded by binder matrix okay, such that the total solid loading of AP is 86 percent. They maintained the same solid loading and did calculations for various sizes of AP particles. Okay. The results are shown here. This is for a 400 micron particle, 200 micron particle and all the way up to a 5 micron particle. What I would like you to observe is that the temperature distribution in the gas phase that is shown as a contour plot here becomes uniform as you go from 400 microns to 5 microns. What I mean by uniform is uniform in the horizontal direction. Here, if you see the 0 to 200 micron is AP, it is a 400 micron AP particle, therefore the radius is 200 micron, 0 to 200 micron is AP, it has a certain temperature distribution over it. At the edge, it is there is binder which is decomposing and laterally diffusing into AP, creating a non premixed flame which is at a much higher temperature than the AP monopropellant flame. AP monopropellant flame is at 1250 degree, uh, 1250 kelvins. The uh, stoichiometric uh, binder AP flame will be at 3000 kelvins. Therefore, here the temperature is about 1200 kelvins, here it is about 3000 kelvins. And there is a clear two dimensional structure to the temperature profile. Here it is monopropellant, here there is another flame, non premix flame sitting, and this entire assembly controls how much heat transfer goes to the surface. Okay. I would like you to imagine the ethylene flame that I showed you in the morning. This is how the ethylene flame edge looks. Okay. Now, what has happened? What they did is they did calculations by reducing the size of AP. As you keep reducing the size of AP, there comes a point where the extent of lateral diffusion of the fuel and the oxidizer, the distance becomes comparable to the size of AP. When this happens, there is a there is premixing of fuel and oxidizer before the reaction begins. This is the idea that we discussed in the morning. When you keep reducing the diameter of the fuel issuing jet, when you come to a point where the diameter is comparable to the lateral diffusion distance, the flame will become premixed. So, that is exactly what is happening here. Here you have a AP monopropellant flame surrounded by a diffusion flame or a non premix flame. So, you keep reducing the size of the AP particle. There is complete mixing of AP decomposition products and fuel before the flame gets established. So, what you get is a flat premixed flame. Okay. So, that in this case this calculation is done at 20 atmospheres, this happens at about 20 micron. Okay. Till about 30 micron there is some variation in the horizontal temperature profile. 
but at 20 microns clearly the profile has become more or less homogeneous ok. This is the uh, the crux of the argument based on lateral diffusion and this is what is used to calculate the effective temperature ok. So, for the same solid loading and at the same pressure the heat flux that is coming to the surface for a 400 micron particle is mostly controlled by the AP monopropellant flame because there is only a small zone that is influenced by the non premixed flame. On the other hand if you go to 20 micron particle the heat flux that is coming to the surface is completely controlled by a homogeneous premixed flame at 3000 kelvins. Here the heat transfer is controlled by a flame sending heat to the surface at 1250 kelvins. Here the same solid loading same pressure the only difference is that the diameter of the particle is smaller and this is controlled by a flame that is at 3000 kelvins ok. And this is the basis for the general rule of thumb that is used that reducing the particle size increases the burn rate of the propellant simply because when you reduce the particle size the flame the effective temperature at which heat flux is transferred to the surface is much higher and therefore the burn rates are higher ok. And this effect that larger particles are controlled by monopropellant flame and smaller particles are controlled by a premix flame is captured using a simple idea based on effective temperature and this functional form and let us not worry about the details the functional form is dependent on uh, should uh, is dependent on the relative uh, magnitude of the size of the AP particle in relation to the diffusion distance. So, the z is defined as the size of AP divided by the diffusion distance ok. If the diffusion distance is larger than the size of AP you have premix flame you have diffusion distance much smaller than the size of AP you have AP monopropellant flame ok. So, in the limit as z goes to 0 you should have premixed flame and in the limit as z goes to infinite you should have monopropellant flame and as it is shown here this limits are correctly captured by this functional form as I will we will see later that it also captures the intermediate points correctly. And now the next question is how to calculate the diffusion distance we already know how to do it we have already discussed this in some detail ok. The extent of lateral diffusion is proportional to square root dtr this we have already discussed tr is uh, the reaction time which is density divided by the reaction rate that is exactly what is done here density is rho g divided by reaction rate which is krp squared diffusion constant ok. This idea you can express in a slightly simpler form as uh, shown here what I want you to recognize is that the diffusion distance should decrease with increase in pressure and at a given pressure it should decrease with increase in reaction rate and that is exactly what you see here d0 is inversely proportional to pressure and it is also inversely proportional to square root of the reaction rate ok. This is, is, is this idea clear this is probably the most important thing that is uh, quite here it, it follows the same logic that uh, I showed in the morning when we were discussing the ethylene flame ok. d0 goes to square root dtr and d0 this uh, gives us a relation in which d0 is inversely proportional to pressure and inversely proportional to the square root of the reaction rate ok. Only that we do not know any absolute values we have chosen some relative magnitudes to fix the constants in this expression that is it ok. We have all the elements required to make predictions now so let us look at the predictions in the theory. So, as I said that at the limits we definitely know that the relationship works, but this is to show that at intermediate sizes also we get the correct results. The uh, uh, the thick lines uh, the continuous lines are the predictions from CFD by Gross and Bexted. the dotted lines are the predictions of the current model they are in reason they are in very good match ok. In fact, this uh, is what was used to validate the lateral diffusion model let us go to the phenomena of extinction even in uh, we saw this earlier for the uh, 
for a typical composite solid propellant, smaller particles are fuel rich and larger particles are oxidizer rich. Okay. And therefore, if you look at the surface temperature, the surface temperature will be closer to the AP monopropellant temperature at large particle sizes and at small particle sizes, it can become lower than the AP melting temperature. This is in fact what the calculation shows and this is because uh, here I have shown four particles of different sizes starting from 274 microns to as small as 12 microns. Okay. All the diameters have been scaled by the diameter, diameters of the particles, so they are, are all of unit size. So, remember that all particles are coated with fuel of the same thickness. So, the thickness of the fuel is fixed. Therefore, the amount of binder, the amount of fuel available for the large particle is much smaller compared to a particle of smaller size. In fact, for the same binder thickness, a 274 micron particle is almost pure AP, it is 97.7 percent AP. But on the other hand, 11.35 micron uh, particle, more than half of it or about half of it is binder, 50 percent is binder. Okay. So, therefore, the surface temperature of the smaller particle can actually become smaller than 870 kelvins, which is the melting temperature of AP and therefore can stop burning. Okay. So, highly fuel rich particles cannot undergo self sustained deflagration as the surface temperature can become less than 870 kelvins. This is termed as local extinction as opposed to what we discussed earlier for homogeneous compositions. Along with particles in the premixed limit, particles smaller than extinction limit are also homogenized with the binder. Okay, one thing I forgot to mention, I will go back and mention uh, after I finish this slide. So, in a propellant at a given pressure, if all particles are locally extinct, then there is global extinction. Okay. What I missed was that I have been referring to the limit of fine AP, that is nothing but once you reach 20 microns, the uh, the gas phase does not recognize that the AP is of a certain size. It does not actually matter whether it is 20 microns or 10 microns or 5 microns. All these cases will have the same burn rate because all the three cases are controlled by a single premixed flame. Okay. In fact, uh, you can clearly see that here. You look at the predictions uh, as a function of particle size at 20.7 atmospheres. Once you reach a point where the uh, size is about 20 microns, irrespective of what the size is, how small you go, the burn rate remains the same because they are all controlled by the same premixed flame. And all these particles are called the fine AP particles and they are homogenized with the binder in addition to the particles that are extinct. So, I, I said that uh, there is no hard data available for uh, validating the extinction limits for homogeneous uh, compositions, but what we, we found evidence in by other means. Uh, this is a prediction for a particular composition taken from Miller 1982. When we do not account for extinction, the predictions uh, is uh, shown by this dotted line and the data are the triangles which are actually uh, the error bars are about 10 percent. So, the deviation in burn rate is quite significant, it is about 20 percent. But when we account for extinction, the predictions are very good. And not just that, it even predicts the change in the slope with pressure. Okay. The general impression is that you write A p raised to n and uh, we assign a lot of significance to the n and we demand that n should not change with pressure, but that is not true, that need not be true. Okay. n is constant or n can be approximated to be a constant only in certain pressure ranges. Okay. So, a set of small particles or fuel rich fine particles which are not burning at low pressures can start burning at high pressures changing the index of the propellant. So, the index can itself be a function of pressure. Okay. This is not something that is recognized in practice, it is demanded that the n should remain constant, but only over a certain pressure range it remains constant and it is a function of the composition and other variables. Okay. So, accounting for local extinction critical to accurate predictions. A nitrative process is used to arrive at extinction free statistical particle path, failing of which indicates global extinction. And this whole uh, theory that I just described to you is available in the form of a MATLAB code that anybody can use to make predictions for 
a variety of composite solid propellants. Predictions have been made for uh, this is a slightly old slide it says over 30 propellants, but I think uh, if I remember right now we have made predictions for over 100 propellants of variety of kinds including aluminized ones with uh, nitramines and variety of catalysts and uh, inhibitors the predictions are reasonably good. I think I will close with uh, this particular slide because this is an idea that we have discussed in some detail today. I made several statements about the extent of lateral diffusion. This slide sort of summarizes or shows a good uh, uh, case for uh, all those claims. The first claim is that the extent of lateral diffusion decreases with increase in pressure. Okay. So, what is shown here is the heat flux that comes to a comes to the surface of AP particles constituting a propellant and the AP size varies from as small as 10 microns to about 300 400 microns okay uh, in you can see clearly that at 20.7 atmospheres the contribution of heat flux to the surface because of lateral diffusion okay because this is normalized by the heat flux that that particle would get if it was only ap okay so the contribution from lateral diffusion is much much higher than what that particle would get just from AP. It is in fact a factor of 12 for this particular size because it is close to stoichiometric the flux is very large. For the same particle when you go to 68.9 atmospheres the contribution to the heat flux because of premixing caused by lateral diffusion is significantly lower. It is a factor of 3 lower and therefore this propellant will in relation to AP this propellant will have a burn rate of this magnitude at 20 atmospheres, but as the pressure increases it will get closer and closer to AP and that is the reason why the slope for these cases decreases as you have particles of different sizes. Okay. Another example is shown here a different composition SD318 here again the extent of lateral diffusion significantly decreases with increase in pressure. I will uh, I will skip this part. Okay. One thing that we can do with this code is that uh, which is of value to practitioners is if you are looking for a particular composition that will satisfy that will satisfy the demands of a certain mission and you know what AP particle sizes you have, you can use the code to get uh, a space of all possible combinations of index, burn rate and temperature sensitivity and from there you can pick a few for experimental validation. This will significantly bring down the number of trials that you need to do to choose or design a propellant for a particular application. Okay. We will just close with by saying that I still have not answered the question of the connection between low index and instability and uh, at this point I want to emphasize that with all the effects that I have described uh, AP monopropellant flame, the uh, uh, lateral diffusion because of uh, the fuel and the oxidizer, particle size effects, extinction all taken into account, high energy compositions will have a, the lowest possible index seems to be about 0.4. There is no provision or there is no uh, mechanism by which a high energy AP HTPB composition can have an index that is lower than 0.4. So, the index can come below 0.4 only with some additives which could be a combination of aluminum brings down the index a little bit down from 0.4 which we will see tomorrow, but some special additives are required to bring it below 0.3 okay. as to what the mechanisms that are at play we will discuss in subsequent lectures. Okay. <laughs>